from the very top. Hello and welcome to another round of Ready to Amplify interview series. I'm your host, Lee Fowler, and I'm here today with the amazing Kelsey Ramsden. Welcome. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Welcome. Before we get started, if you don't know who Kelsey Ramston is, you may be under a rock. I shouldn't insult you guys. This is terrible. Um, I, I never do that, but I'm actually I'm okay, excited and like nervous me. at I the actually, same time. I, I am under a rock as well. I like I'm in my office bubble of people like you haven't heard of them. I'm like no. What? This is right, you know. Oh, I'm I'm constantly under a rock as well. So join the club. Um, Kelsey has founded and rocked multi-million dollar companies, and you know I I was introduced to her probably about five or six years ago when she hit the top 100 profit top female can Canadian female entrepreneurs, um, not once, but twice. And I believe you spoke at a Women in Biz Network event. You're on stage uh, with Lee Mitchell. Uh, there was a conference and, you know, hundreds of people. I was in the crowd um, and just blown away by what you had to say. And of course, we fast forward five, six years and I just, you're, you've been on my radar. And then you launched this book, The Success Hangover. Oh, pardon me success hangover. And, yes. um, you know, Kelsey's had a really great career and a, a huge, I mean, that's an understatement, but um, we're here today to talk about her journey to the top, amplifying, shifting, and some of the common themes of her book, uh, the you know, success hangover. Can we, uh, I'm going to like, let's just talk about the book for a second. This is a huge thing. It is. It took a long time. I'm looking at stacks of it right now. Uh, it's, um, you know, I've done a, a, a few things along the way so far, and I would say it it's hard to make me proud of my work, in all honesty. Like, I am, I am, a, I am a brutal critic. I'm a very great critic, really, is the truth of the matter. And uh, I'm proud of this book. I, I, think, it, I think it's good work. Um, and really who the book fo book is for is for anyone who set out to do a thing, whatever that thing may be, and did the thing, and then felt that kind of afterwards like, huh, that's, so that's that. Now what? <laughs> you know, just kind of the moment. Um, the, oh, I like to call it the kind of the hollow afterglow. Um, like it's like climbing a mountain, don't you? You climb a mountain and you get to the top and then you can either choose to stay there or go and do another mountain. But in order to do the next mountain, you must descend. And that descension is is uncomfortable. Um, and for a long time, up until, you know, the last 18, 21 days, wasn't really talked about because it's not popular to say, oh, you know, I, I have everything I said I wanted. And I'm unhappy. And people, oh, so are you with your promotion? And, you know, oh, I'm so sad for you. You launched your book or what? You know, we were talking about yes. about when you launched your book. Um, yes. Or whatever. Right? Oh, you got your degree. So sad. And uh, so you just don't talk about it because it feels ungrateful or, or like, you know, first world problem or whatever the case may be. But the truth of the matter is, uh, I have lost friends to it. Yeah. You know, there are people who um, can't figure out how to feel alive again after that thing and oh spend a lot of time um, on the shady side of that hill, you know? Yes. Yeah. So that's what the book is about and how to solve it. You know, like I, I talk obviously about the normalizing piece, which is it's terrible and you, you know, it's so bad <laughs> and it's not a good time. Um, then I talk about how to get out of it. So that's, that's, I think the biggest thing is either avoiding that hangover or abbreviating it to the point where you can kind of disrupt your own status quo and feel alive again in the next pursuit. I love that. And, you know, I think it's, it's interesting because we actually, I think we like, once you go through it a few times and you're aware of it, you can actually, you know, be more proactive instead of reactive, right? Like oh. that's a big part of it. And I know many people like you've launched the book. I just launched the book and you know, you're working and working, working, you're like 
you know, this is a big thing. You're, you're breaking through barriers and fears and hard work and long days maybe. And, and then you hit that point where it's like, oh, right? Like exhaustion or, you know, just like now what? This emptiness a little bit, sadness even, like of all the emotions to feel. Like there's this, like, like you said, hollowness of like, oh, okay, I did it. Now what? And, yeah. you know, I know well, I have, <laughs> yeah, go, go, sorry. Yeah, no, I mean, I think, I think part of the thing is, is that for driven, ambitious people, um, oftentimes comfort lies in the discomfort of pursuit. Yeah. We're not happy when there's nothing and it's all accomplished and we're done. You know, there is no finish line for us, but we, you know, we hurry to the finish line and then we win. And then we're like, huh, but will that, as terrible as it is to say, in many cases, people like us, um, and there are a lot, there are legions of us, it turns out, I didn't really realize that this was going to do what it's done. Um, yeah. But there are legions of us who realize that um, there is no finish line and there is no end game. And, um, and the idea that there is one is actually quite frightening. And so kind of being okay with there being kind of this continual pursuit, this idea of that forever is really, really turns us on, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I love this because I think, you know, there's, uh, there's sort of this unhealthiness and, and I know with athletes as well, like, you know, you hit the Olympics, you work your whole life for it. And then there's this depression or, you know, just this, the mental health aspect of it where, you know, hitting the wall and just, like that. Yeah. So this is okay. This is very interesting because I, I love the idea of like shifting how you look at your goals, shifting out how you look at your at your accomplishments, even because I know many of us, um, including myself, associate our identity and our worthiness to how we're doing in our careers and in, in our roles. And so I think this this shifts things quite a bit. Like when you talk about the pursuit, tell me what kind of elements are you talking about? Like, what does that look yeah, like? Yeah. And, and you know, because <laughs> at, at one side, <laughs> yeah. But oh, I was just gonna say because on one side it's like what we know makes us comfortable, right? Like we know how to goal set, we know how to reach goals. But then to be like, okay, this is an ongoing pursuit. Like, how do we? It never ends. What do you mean it never ends? Like this. I mean, you, we were saying how it can be so uncomfortable to show up at a dinner party and not say who we are and what we do and what our accomplishments are, right? Like. Totally. Well, that was a part of the reckoning for me. So in the book, there's like, there's 10 exercises and there's a bunch more, but I picked the 10 that like, may I preface asterisk. Uh, <laughs> this is a book that is my experience. I am not the knower or the guru or the almighty. I have no, you know, degrees in psychiatry. This is just, you know, my experience. And so to struggle through it and create things for myself that help me get out of it. So yes. one of the things was, this idea of who am I without all the, these, all the paperwork, right? Who am I without all these awards and, and things and press and Forbes and whatever. And that was not awesome. Feeling that was terrible. I was like, well, okay. So, you know, pen yeah. to paper and you don't, so you can't say how many children you bred or where you're from or what degrees you have or what your title is or how much money or what kind of car or where you went on holiday, like strip all that stuff. And there's, there's um, a stark contrast between who we are and what we do. And we often make that the same thing somewhere along the lines. We allow that to, to converge. And what we do is taking who we are and applying it to a thing who I am and I apply it to business or who I am and I apply it to a relationship or a party or a vacation or whatever. So who you want to know is actually who I am. Really. It's nice for you to know that I have a lot of paperwork that makes you feel like I'm valid or some, you know, <laughs> some kind of like hoop jumping thing. Yeah. Um, but look, I was who I am before I got the paperwork. Yeah. And I will be who I am if the paperwork all burns down in a fire and I never mention it again. And I think that that makes us often feel totally um, helpless and ultimately in control at the same time. 
If you can find a place where you're okay with not have, having to have a preamble and allowing that to not define you and showing up as just who you are and not what you've done, it is such a good time. I'll tell you what, it is the <laughs> best time. <laughs> if, if I'm going to give it, so I, I talk, speak around the world, and then they do this lovely intro, Kelsey Graham's in, blah, 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 blah. And then, honestly, I hate coming out after my own intro because it's like, all right, wow, us. What are you going to do? Bring it. Like, you know, and I, it's the shittiest thing ever. And so the first thing I do when I give every talk is I show, like, these totally terrible photos of me and bring myself down to reality for the people is, like, I am not your monkey to perform the next act. I am just a human exploring the world just like everybody else who happen to do a few things that come with paperwork. But there yeah. are people in the world who are saving lives, who are changing lives, who are adopting children in need, who are dealing with, they don't come with paperwork, but isn't what they do a hell of a lot more amazing than me making a bunch of money? It's huge. Yeah, you know, so all that like... kind of thing is, is really, um, is really kind of where I got to when I was figuring my way out of this thing. And so one of the, one of the things in the book is how do you arrive at who you are. So if I was to introduce myself, I would say I'm Kelsey Ramson. I'm a creator who deeply values intimate connection. Wow. Wow. Yeah, that is powerful. Boom, right? Like I'm just like goosebumps hair raising moments. Yeah. This so is here's what, this what happens. <laughs> it's useful because what happens to most of us is let's say you get to a place where you have options now. You're ready to amplify, you want to do the next thing, you want whatever, but you can do this, 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 or this. And a lot of people get stuck there because there's too many. It's like a, the problem of opportunity, right? Yes. So yes. knowing who I am, like knowing who I am allows me to look at those options and say, which one allows me to be a creator and is going to give me the opportunity to intimately connect with other people, yeah. with the project, with whatever. So right away, some of those options are off the table. It might be the ones that make me feel funny, da, da, da. but I know I'm not going to kill it in that arena because it's not, it's not a place where I can take who I am and apply it at my best. Mm, I love that. So where, where are you applying this now? Cause I, it's, I know that you have, you know, a lot of different businesses and, and things mm. on the go balls in the air, three kids, like, you know, yeah. the list goes on. So how do you apply this? this knowledge of, of who you are to what you're doing now. So I love that because I know making decisions as a business owner can be something we struggle with, but if you have that core sense of like knowledge and, and just trust of, of like, yeah, this is what I'm here to do. And you're guided by something, you know, that powerful, I think is just amazing. Yes. So tell us how you're applying that. Like, how are you navigating your, your career decisions and Cool. What so yeah. I have really what I do do in real life is uh, this is, you know, a, <laughs> another life real as well. But um, I am a, a general contractor. So I build roads yeah. and bridges and, and piers and that kind of thing. And I develop land. So the, that's really what I do uh, and always did do. And so I still do that. And we're just expanding into the Caribbean. And that's really exciting. Just open an office in Jamaica. That's really cool. All these things. That's so, wow, that's really, yes. um, the book is, was meant to be, honestly, I was like, this is what I did. I was like, I'm going to write this book. I'm going to put it here and <laughs> I'm just going to leave it there. And some, you know, a hundred friends and maybe a few other people will give it to the, it'll make its way to the people who need it. And that'll be, but I just can't, you know, when you have an idea and it won't go away and it's like, yep. <laughs> it was like that. And so. So that's what I thought was going to happen. And I would just go back to my being doing construction stuff. That's not what happened. So now that's a, that's a line item, the book, uh, doing book things, which is all new. And that's a great opportunity for me to learn what I don't know. And then, um, and then when we were talking before, I, I previously was doing some wingman stuff, like helping people in their businesses. Um, and I hated it. It's like with all these people who lots of people want to do that and are doing it and love it, but I'm not one of them. Yeah. And uh, I didn't like it because I don't like, I was really challenged with the pace 
of some people's uh, ability to change. Yeah, yeah. And um, I would, I was just like, oh my gosh, you're so close. Oh my God, you know, and I am not, I have patience is not a virtue I have, except with my children. So uh, I killed it. So now what I do is three times a year, I go on adventures with people who want to experience something entirely different, create space, disrupt themselves, have like big aha moments and surround themselves with other people like us. Yes. So I just got back from San Diego where we did a um, meditation and sniper shooting retreat. Which <laughs> <was beautiful. laughs> I, I love it. I love it. I saw this picture in my news feed the other day. And I'm like, am I supposed to be watching this? I think somebody's meditating. And I think that person has a gun. And like, oh my goodness, what is going on here? <laughs> I don't know. Well, Dr. Doug Brown, and I have to give him props. He's the guy. And Jason Gaynard, if you... So um, I'm part of this group called Mastermind Talks, which is run by Jason Kinnard. And Jason brought Doug in to do this exercise in one of our things. And I loved it so yes. much. I went last year and then I did it again this year. And really what it is, is, and Doug would obviously explain it better, but effectively um, there's a type of meditation where you keep your eyes open that's really good for people like us. Ah, okay. And when I say people like us, I mean people who, if you had to pick being a hunter or a farmer, you know, most entrepreneurs are hunters um, because we can't be like, and we put the thing in the hole and we sit. <laughs> We're like, uh, now what do we do? It's in the hole. So we add water. What is my son? Who knows? You know? And so, um, so anyway, so you go and you do these series of meditations and the, and the gun and for Canadians are like, what, what is going on? What are these guns? What's happening? You know, so it's, <laughs> in this group, we had, uh, there were nine of us like, four or five people had never even like seen a gun in a room. It was awesome. And so you, what you learn is um, that you can focus on just one thing. Mm, you can control nice. your thoughts and your body and your breathing and your, like your full everything. And you can connect with that uh, outcome in a way that it's foregone. And you then are just, you become in the flow. And uh, so by the end of it, you're shooting 100% accuracy at 800 yards. So eight football fields away, what? I am killing people. <gasps> I'm not actually killing people, but I could if I had to. But uh, the degree to which that gives people that, like, people melt down. It scrambles some eggs out there, you know, because... Wow you realize your ability is much greater than you're allowing yourself to operate at. And that, that it's a real game changer. Yeah. So that was the last trip we did. So, um, so that's what, so that's what I'm doing to do this kind of wingmaning is really not about me being the person. It's about me being just a person and bringing other people around and going and doing these things, um, which are, entirely different, but provide great opportunity for people to just totally change their game. Oh, I Next love it. Yeah. I love it. I love it. And I just, I have some comments I'm going to display here on the screen. Cause I have um, Jamie Spielman popping in saying, you know, Kelsey's hardcore has been her whole life. Trust me. She kills it at life. Follows her gut authentically her. That's where the gold is succeeding. Cause she's tapping into what happens when you're totally in tune with what you're genuinely meant to do. And that's the pursuit, you know, that the, the pursuit is, I think that a lot of us are after is that like, you know, that's the journey, right? It's like, coming yeah. closer to who we are and who we're meant to be and how we are and, and, and how we're, you know, it's not necessarily about the shoulds. It's about, I'm, I'm probably covering the whole screen with our comment here. I'm going to take that off a lot. A shout out there for sure. Um, but yeah, so this is something, you know, like there's this thing about, focus right like and in, in with today's technology and all the things going on and as entrepreneurs like you hit on that exactly is like you know so many of us are just like the wheels the cogs are, are are turning and at the same time I think we can get really comfortable in that mm -hmm. like in that process or in that sort of cycle of uh you know go 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 or in the busyness and in yes. your book you talk a lot about um you know, being stuck and then how to get unstuck and how to like, what are those symptoms that um, you said it very nicely here. And I, I just want to pull it up because it was just so, so very good. Just one second here. I'm going to pull this up here because 
Um, you talk about future proofing your business and the symptoms that show up when you're stuck and you're not yeah. maybe moving outside of the box because box our society really teaches us to to stay the course and do the norm and check the boxes and you know and sometimes we're not even rewarded we're, we're punished for doing things differently which I think you've done your whole life and 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 you talk about that story in your book which is so great so tell me a little bit about the symptoms of that that entrepreneur who's maybe not future proofing their business who's maybe stuck what what are those symptoms of being stuck cool can we do can we do adult content are we okay with yeah. that? Yeah, yeah, let's do it. I think so. This is Facebook, so keep it. Going. Uh, this is this is how you know. This is my favorite quote from the book. So, um, can you see this picture? Ooh, okay, yes, I see it. And and there's a dot dot so dot in that. <laughs> when you're stuck in the missionary sex of your career, it's decent, <laughs> it's fun, but it's hardly memorable. I love it. So it's stuck it's, in the mission position of your career. Okay, I'm going to yeah, show so, that here. Um, it's like, it's, it counts, right? So the first time you have sex is a big deal. It's like, oh my God, and it was probably that way. And uh, and then, you know, you do that a few times. And you do it a few times more. And now you're 45. And it's fine. <laughs> and it's six, you know, it's like, yeah. Uh, but you're not going to remember that. You can't be like, oh, remember that time on Wednesday in August? You're like, yeah, I don't know. Some of, you know. <laughs> yeah. so this applies to our business and life when everything that we're doing is the way we've done it and we've not tested the parameters. We've not said, do I, is that still my belief? Does this wow. still work? Is this still, it's working today, but it's like anything in a race, right? So I'm going to get two pencils. Are these kind of different colors? Yeah, kind of. Yeah. So yeah, here's one brighter. And we're going to race. And so this pencil is winning. Let's say this is the finish line. This pencil is winning, but it's very unlikely this pencil is looking back at this other pencil because it's the winner and it's looking forward and it's doing the thing it does to win races. Meanwhile, this pencil might know something this pencil doesn't. Yes. Right? So yes. not, and the idea isn't to look to other people or look behind you or whatever. It's just like check yourself. Because your race could be potentially improved. Just because you always ran it this way doesn't mean that someone's not going to come and, you know, usurp you just by running a different race. Um, wow, the first yes. guy who ran the, like, four-minute mile did it because he said, I'm going to run a mile in four minutes. He figured yeah. out a way to do it. And he did it. And then guess what? The next year, everybody's running four-minute miles because they figured out, that guy figured out the way. Yes, so and yes. check yourself and look and go, hmm, is this average? Is this mundane? Is this reasonable and fine? There's a point where mastery becomes mundane. Yes. So good I mean, that's today. huge. Yeah. Oh, oh, my goodness. And um, look, our minds are high-powered machines, right? And there's a difference. When you go to work and everything comes intuitively, that's awesome. Some people call it flow, but at a certain point, it's boring as hell. And that's called mastery. And that's when you just know. And when things come up, it actually aggravates you because you're like, Ugh, honestly, this is so straightforward. I couldn't be bothered. This is fine. It's so, so obvious. Um, that's when your brain starts to tell you you're not making choices anymore. What we love is choice. We love A or B. Now I can prove my monkey mind is tuned in because I'm going to decide the outcome. It's just yes. not like, yeah, yeah, okay, go ahead, whatever. So, so the concept behind this is if you feel that or if you're in a place where you're not actually making choice anymore, you're probably in that place where you are very susceptible to being usurped, very susceptible to being poured out, not burned out. Um, very susceptible to losing your kind of position and connection with what it is you do. So, uh, okay, um, I know we don't have much time, but I'm going to ask you a couple questions. Can we do something weird for a second? Let's do it. Let's make it weird. <laughs> cool. I love weird. Everyone can play along. So uh, um, here's what we do. I'm going to ask you something. You're going to answer the question in your mind. You're not going to say it out loud. I'm going to ask you another thing. You're going to answer the question in your mind. You're not going to say it out loud. Then I'm going to read your mind. Cool? <laughs> Sounds good. Okay. <laughs> okay here we go. So I want you, and everyone can play along, anyone watching at any given time, uh, ready to go. Okay, so you're going to think of um, something that you know, something specific that you know really well.
Got it? Okay. Yeah, got it. So whatever comes. This isn't like crazy rock beds. Okay, cool. Uh, now I want you to think of something you remember, something specific you remember, like a memory. Okay. Um, let me think about this. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. So here's what I know. No, like 93, 4% of the time, the thing that you know really well, you can teach it. Yeah? You yeah, could teach yeah. another human to do it. Yeah. Okay, cool. The thing that you remember has three tags to it. The first is there's emotion, love, lust, fear, hate, something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. The second thing is it's an experience that you could not repeat the exact same way again. Absolutely not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah correct. <laughs> that is correct. Yeah. Uh, you shared it with another human being by virtue of you either did it with them like here or here, or you then told it to them in the real life flesh, not like on Facey or Insta. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. So cool. So now we just, I just, the minds of like hundreds of people who are playing along <laughs> including you, and isn't that fabulous. I should take that on the road. That's my money maker. Um, I like it. So it's fun and it's a cool parlor trick, but, but this is what I figured out. And this is like one of the biggest ahas for me to come out of my success hangover and really like supercharge my life yes. was so many of us are waiting for the big aha, the big epiphany, the moment when it becomes clear, the permission slip, the whatever, the sky to part and the, oh, the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's not happening. And the reason it doesn't happen is because we're waiting around for it to happen using this paradigm of the thing we know really well. As opposed to, look, the thing we know really well, honestly, and this can break a few hearts, that's that's really actually like any smart monkey can get their MBA. Any smart monkey can become an accountant. Any smart monkey can become a teacher. No offense to anybody, but like that's just table stakes. You want to show up and do something in the world? That's just basic. It's hard, yes. but yeah. it's nothing. It's not who you are. It's something yes. you did. Yes. So the epiphany has to be unique to you. So we're focused on this something we did and waiting for some magical thing to come. When if we strategically engineer those things that make us individuals, our experiences, who we really are, like we can abbreviate and really um, emphasize our, our capacity in our mind to have those aha moments. So I call it the three E model and the fourth E is epiphany. So the first is uh, emotion. The second is experience. And the third is embed. So who do you choose to embed it with? Another human. And if you strategically engineer those things to happen to you more and more often, I can guarantee you the epiphany will come sooner than if you did mm. bugger all about it. That's big. And so that, my friends, is how I got myself out of this and how anyone, like quite easily and with small things, which way are you going to go to school when you drop your kid off tomorrow? How are you going to sign off on your email? Who are you going to decide to call? What are you going to do this Friday night? Uh, look, you don't have to leave your spouse and buy a flashy car. You can change things that remind yourself that you are making choices all the time. I love it. Uh, but you're choosing not to. You're just doing it in default. And so if you get strategic about those three E's, the fourth E will come, and the success hangover will conclude. Boom. 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 There's the formula right there. I love it. This is like <laughs> mind blown. My, my six-year-old knows this expression. He's like, mind blown. But he just he doesn't even say anything. He's like, um, <laughs> but like he speaks, but he just like he's on his own. <laughs> yeah, guys. Yeah. <laughs> But this is this is so you know just so amazing that you're here sharing this with today, and I just I can't stop. I don't know if these like tears of joy or tears just like I'm totally resonating with what you're saying. I know our audience is, and you know I want people to pick up your book Success Hangover and check it out and and let you know how it's impacting their lives. And I know Sarah in the comments earlier. I'm just gonna post this. Kelsey's book here is at successhangover.com, so we'll we'll display that here. And for those of you, you know this is a fear I think that a lot of us have I, I was sharing this with you before is that success means you know the busyness and the overwhelm and and all that mm. stuff so if, if you're dealing with you know that fear I think the book is going to help you navigate that a lot better um, oh you know in a big God. way and totally. 
Oh my goodness, I usually have a copy of my book here, but what I want people to know, oh my goodness, hold on. Where the heck is my <laughs> book? What, what the heck, okay. We're, we're, <laughs> you know what, I went to the photo shoot and I took them all, but here's the old one. So the first cover was like tying up your shoelaces, right? So there was like, you're on the start line, you're ready to amplify, you know where you're headed, and it's like, just get, get on that start line. But what I want people to know is that when you have that magic inside of you and, and you need to get it out to the world, you want to get it out to the world, there are strategies and steps you can take. And that's where my book comes in. The ready to amplify is to do it in a way that feels good. So that's why it's so in alignment with what Kelsey's talking about today is, is yeah. having that alignment and flow and and doing it not necessarily following the shoulds but going way back to old-fashioned relationship marketing basics where it's about the relationships and the systems and the structures so that's at leefowler.com book that i you know just part of this whole series is to help our viewers like step into that next big thing and and to really be aligned with that and and i know many of us don't feel ready ever but this is where yeah, you know i was just waiting i was like i want to back on <laughs> One is, I mean, you had to use ready in the title, but ready is like, so if you actually look up the definition of ready, you're going to see that it says all things considered, fully prepared, and something else. Uh, but that is not possible. Business is art and science. There is not all things considered. That is an impossible expectation. You will never know everything there is to know. And I think people get stuck in this, like, uh, you know, when you're, um, double dutch skipping you do this for like a really long time and people are like what is she doing oh she's double dutching no she's not he is standing <laughs> there doing this there's no skipping ball. and so that is like that is that readiness sense that people are waiting for and i would just say like the readiness is it's is the feeling that yeah. that something is afoot oh that i love it this that is, is all. Yes. So if that is how your people are feeling, then they have to get your book because it is time. It's there is time. not like do not wait to check the box and feel like it's all sorted. It's, as soon as you do that, you're actually fucked because you're you're gonna <laughs> really think you've got it figured and you don't. Anyone who tells you they do is also lying right right this is it okay. and you know I, I will read just from the beginning of your book you just you said something I'm gonna share with people because I think it's so important you, you've shared so much value today and in your book you said you know no one made me do this but I wanted to do it and I had to you know pull through this thing through my eye socks and eye sockets and palm sweating crisis of confidence to lay it out before you and you might sacrifice or understand it the only way we can keep creating we're always ahead of them and they can't understand or see it until we create it and even then sometimes not but we do those like us so keep going the joy equals the challenge uh, that's a little bit out of context but what i heard in this personal note was like yeah. you didn't feel quite ready to let this out but you did it anyways you released it into the world and man like it just it's it's filling people's hearts and souls and thank you so much for being here today i'm just so that's honored Woohoo! okay let's let's keep the journey going on and on and i'm signing out and thanks again everyone for watching check out the book at leafowler.com slash book and we will be uh returning later on uh if you're joining us in the confident content creator club at noon for a virtual meet and greet i'll see you over there all right bye for now